Page 75, Prelude in C minor. Opus 28, number 30, 20, number something by Chopin. I would encourage you to go Google what a prelude is and read about what they are and what they're for and so forth. You know, they kind of set the mood for things. So if you happen to be going to a party or something and you hear somebody playing this piece, you might want to rethink the going to the party. It's not, no. At the beginning, I'm going to kind of take this all together. I don't like doing I like to take one hand at a time and figure out the notes and then you'll get the dynamics and the articulation and then eventually I'll add the pedal. Well, I'm not going to add the pedal at first. Let's just get the notes and everything going. We got just a lot of heavy chords first. And you'll mm -hmm. notice the stem on the top staff. The stem goes down on that chord into the bottom staff. They're simply, this, this publisher's way of telling you, play that note in the bottom staff with the right hand. So here you've got these three notes in the right hand. I do a, a fourth finger on the E flat, by the way. Well, they also want you to do that. So the just a C minor chord in second position here and this happens a lot in this piece so a lot of the notes for the right hand are going to be in the bottom staff so it's here and so you got here and then the next chord again play that A flat with the right hand in there in the bottom here and then now they're telling you fourth finger hold the quarter notes down as you do this you come down here. You, there's a lot of moving around here and you can't connect these chords with the hands that's okay we'll use the pedal but right now let's do this without pedal because we can hear it more clearly without pedal so second measure you're here and then here and then here they want five four two and the thumb is going to cover both of these black keys isn't that fun because the left hand is kind of busy down here and it can't help. It's very thick, very heavy. It's what Chopin wanted. And hold these notes down if you can. And just lift these, these up and go. So it's here. And that, that, just work these notes out. Spell out the chord. Let's just do that. This is the last beat of the second measure. Starting at the bottom, you have an A flat and an A flat in the left hand. Okay, and then the right hand takes over and it's got a C, E flat, A flat, C. It's a. Got it? It's an A flat chord. See, the chord is here. That's the chord. It's just we re re rearranged it. Work that out. Next measure. Now we got natural sound. And here. There's a lot of Chopin chords. We use all five fingers on these things. And then here, don't forget the A flat. And hold these down as you do that. And then here, and spell out the chord. D, an A, and a D. And then an F sharp, a C, and a D. Here. And the next one. Sing a line, it's this fun here. And here. See, hold the D step. Keep going. I like the fingering there in the second line, second measure. It's the last two beats, it's here. And one five and then then one two four. And you'll get that some more. Same thing. Is what we're after. It's a short note, so we're going to use two fingers here. Two different. Two. Again, five on the F. So, so I can do that. So hold these notes down. And again, I'll, they're telling you with that little line that does that, whatever thing, use the right hand for all of that. Be natural. And I use thumb for both of those. You don't have to. You can do that if you want. That's fine. And 
that C, C on the left hand. And then the last line is similar to the second line, not exactly right. Try and play this as legato as you can with the hands. at a time if you have to because there's a lot of notes in this. Fortunately it's a very slow piece. Largo is really slow. And then once you have that we can add there's not much articulation it's all legato pretty much. There's some phrasing we'll put that in but then we'll go ahead and add the pedal and they're suggesting overlapping pedal and you just change it on every beat. And I have some suggestions with the pedal. Let's talk about that. I'm going to push the notes down first and then the pedal. Although, because this starts out fortissimo, I could push the pedal down with the notes or slightly before the notes. But it's not accented, so I would probably just push the pedal down with the notes. And then I'm going to change the pedal after I play the notes. So it's, it's le overlapping pedal. It's legato. This is very loud and it's all loud. Just flat there still because you had a D flat earlier in the measure it still works so that second measure right there it's a D flat you can put a little silence in here if you want it's, it's a, between the second and third measures if, if see we got the phrasing in there you can you can put some silence between the phrases if it'll help you have to experiment with it and try both ways and see what you like it's an interpretation thing. So the third measure here is here. They have a crescendo here. You're not going to crescendo from very loud. Come down to something and go back up to very loud. So maybe you come down to a moderately loud there, here. Just sort of loud. Take your time crescendoing. You don't want to get very loud till the end. In the second line, I put a little silence between them. I want that sound to die away, and on a piano, it takes a little bit of time for these notes to die away. Even if I play them staccato, they're not staccato, that it rings out. And so, all of this sound here, that's not going to die away real quick, and I'd like it gone when I start this. So, I'm going to lift the pedal up here before I go on. I'm not going to have a lot of silence in there. I just want to lift the pedal up before I go on. So starting with the last measure, the first line, you're here. See, I just want a little silence because now we're soft. Very gently. Very legato. Don't speed it up. It's a trick, not a trick, it's a method, a technique we use in counting. When you're playing something really slow, the tendency is to you're going to speed it up naturally. You just it's too slow for you to go. You have a natural speed you want to go. So what we do to, to stay slow is we divide the beat up and we count the divisions, and that helps us. So here rather than one, two, Three, we go one and two and because that's more comfortable speed. So here in the second line is one, I mean throughout the whole thing. One and two and three and so we don't want to speed up, so by kind of dividing it, we can stay slow. And one and two and three and you get the idea? I'll also on these to, these dotted rhythms here at the first measure there in the second line here make sure those short notes are short don't turn those into triplets they've got to be one and a two we end time now the last line you're even softer this is this really soft 
But you're going to end it loud. Did you see the crescendo over at the end? But this part's got to be really soft. That's both hands together. One and two and. Now's a little louder. A little louder. A little louder. Louder. you hang on to that for a little while and then eventually you can let up. That's my impression of this prelude. I would encourage you to go listen to several different recordings of different professionals and find out, listen to how they interpret it differently. It's what you're after. How are they interpreting the music? 